Well, Gavin took the loss of Geek versus Geek a little too personally. No, yes. he didn't. He actually, he's, he's fine, guys. He's fine. But he's fine. <laughs> right now we're going to move on to our main subject. We're talking about fan, role-playing games. And as we have said in the earlier beginning of the game, whenever you say role-playing games, everyone thinks of one particular game. But there's a lot more of them. There are tons more. And that's what we're going to talk about a little today is, is the world of role-playing games. And I got us an awesome ga guest. His name is Sean Patrick Fannin. And Sean... Tell everyone what you've done, because you've done a lot of things in the role-playing industry. I'm just this guy, you know? Um, You're an awesome guy. <laughs> you do a lot for that. charity, too. So, I um, Wow. So I started uh, Dungeons & Dragons back when it was first called Dungeons & Dragons, uh, 1977 era for me. I think I was the first dungeon master in Cobb County, Georgia, quite frankly, which, <laughs> you know, that was not an easy thing, I'll, uh, I'll tell you. I can imagine. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Um, started working professionally around about 85 when I started doing some uh, articles for, uh, I think it was called The Gamer Magazine, uh, the, the, being published by Scott Herring, uh, who's with, uh, with, Gert, with uh, Steve Jackson Games now. And I started doing some reviews and, and, and some stuff like that. <clears throat> I uh, made a few pitches to... Uh, uh, get on board with the Hero Games guys back during the 4th edition era. I started doing some uh, stuff with them. actually became the continuity editor because they decided they actually wanted to build a, uh, a an actual universe around all the different bad guys and villain books and things like that. And I started doing some stuff. My first real project actually for them was, uh, let me see if i got a copy of it here, uh, High Tech Enemies, which that's, that's the very first oh book I ever was, was in right there. We're looking on the uh, television that we have here. Wow. That's, that, that, is, that, that is my first book that I ever did by myself. Wow. Um, and it was actually like launched the idea the of the, of the uh, thematic enemies book. In other words, an enemies book that was about a theme as opposed to just uh, a bunch of bad guys. Um, so that was my first really major stuff. I started doing a bunch more stuff for Hero Games. I did some stuff for the original D uh, D6 Star Wars RPG. Uh, tinkered uh, here and there. Did a few pieces here and there for the you know, old school White Wolf stuff. Um, yes. Shatter Zone, uh, a few other things, uh, uh, sort of floated in and out of, of different stuff like that. Tinkered with the computer games industry off and on for years. That just never really worked out uh, particularly <laughs> well for me. Um, I ended up going back to tabletop, where uh, I've really done every job there is uh, in the industry except art, because my stick figures look like they have epilepsy. <laughs> so oh that's... Gosh. That's the only thing I haven't done, but I've been involved in marketing and sales, uh, you know, various levels of publishing. Uh, I was the events coordinator for the Game Manufacturers Association for a while, uh, also a communications associate with them. Uh, I was a marketing and promotions director for Drive Through RPG and RPG Now. Um, did the Sean's Pick of the Day, which everybody knows now is a thing I do every day during the week, but I started that when I was doing the work with them. Um, uh, Shintar for for uh, Savage Worlds, big epic fantasy setting, and that was sort of my man. big return to writing and design. Uh, we was doing that. Um, got involved with them, the latest Star Wars RPG. I did quite a few books with them with the Fantasy Flight games. Um, almost worked for Wizards of the Coast like three different times. Kind of glad each time I didn't, just because there was always that cycle of hey look everybody who's joined uh, Watsi oh hey look everybody who got fired by Watsi so I just <laughs> I managed to, to duck that every time I'm pretty happy about that we were actually uh, we were actually talking about that earlier how Wizard of the Coast can kind of screw things up <laughs> no well I mean that's it's uh, they're fantastic they're, they're you know rising tide raises all ships and they're the they're the big dogs who who make the industry what it is but you know uh, individuals working for them you it, it, it's not always the most secure position and, and I don't think it would have been particularly well for me at the times that I could have got involved but yeah I've uh, done a lot of stuff with Pinnacle Entertainment uh, including right now I'm still the brand manager for the Savage Rifts project which is probably the thing everybody knows me for right now <laughs> is, uh, is, is doing very Rifts for Savage about Worlds. this um, I did a book called the fantasy role-playing gamers Bible I think a lot of people know me for that one and right now I've got Evil Beagle Games, uh, which is about to go LLC. I'm bringing in three partners for that. We can talk about that more later if you guys want. Uh, I've got some huge projects coming together for that. So I'm actually at the biggest uh, point in my career I've ever been, and things are about to kind of roll over into another huge area. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, we understand that. We just became an LLC ourselves, and things move very quickly when you do that. 
So oh, yeah. I definitely got to say, if we ever get a, a campaign or something going on, you, you have to be a part of it. You have an amazing background. I mean, what, what inspired you to go this whole entire route in your career? Well, I mean, back in 77, gaming and Star Wars sort of changed my life. Um, yep. I was a nerd kid, you know, geek, uh, didn't really fit in, didn't really have uh, a sense of, of where I was going and what I was doing. I didn't feel like I fit in particularly well. Um, discovered the existence of Dungeons and Dragons, taught myself how to be a dungeon master. Uh, and, and my friends were all like, hey, this is kind of cool. We didn't, they didn't know any better to know that, how nerdy it was, so they just enjoyed it. Um, and then that in Star Wars you know, was a huge epif epiphany for me in terms of the kind of storytelling that could be exciting and popular. Uh, so I've always been interested in creating stories, doing epic storytelling, uh, doing stuff that was related to people feeling like they could be heroes. That was something that always inspired me. The thing was, for the longest time, this industry was not the kind of place where you were going to necessarily make a living. You were going to be able to do it and you know something else, and then this was going to be cool too. So I've done other things. I've worked in almost every industry there is except the medical profession. Um, like one of the big jobs I had for a long time was I drove an armored car, uh, and I was writing and designing games at the same time. But uh, <laughs> nice. I, I was at West Point uh, as a cadet. I spent two and a half years there before I finally decided, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> And um, all of my friends there were like, why are you not writing this stuff? The stuff that you do, the games that you write, that you write and design, the, the material you do is at least as cool, if not cooler, than all the stuff that's getting published. You really should be trying to do this. And it wasn't just my friends at West Point, but everywhere. All, all of the friends who had been gaming with me over the years in different places I've been had all encouraged me. So I finally just decided, all right, well, why the hell not? Let's take a stab at it. There, There is another part of that story, though, and it's actually kind of poignant. Um, so the night that I had the papers in front of me to sign to say, yes, I accept my appointment to the academy, my uh, father, who was more proud of me than any person on the planet could have been about the fact that I was going to West Point, pulled out my folder with all of my Dungeons and Dragons maps, world building, character creation, the new rules, things that I'd come up with, uh, all of this amazing stuff that I had done uh, over the years and I just as giant folders. I had no idea that he had dug it out and been looking through it. And um, it's, a little, it's a little emotional for me just because uh, I've, he's been gone now for a few years, but this was a very special moment. And uh, he pulled it out and he said, son, I couldn't be more proud of you. And we all are, but are you sure that this is what you want to do? Because I've read through this stuff. And even though I don't really completely 100% understand what you're going, I can see the world building. I can see the storytelling. I can see the talent. Are you certain that you don't want to pursue this instead? So I was totally committed. I wanted to go to West Point. It was Camelot. I went off. But years later, my dad said, well, now you should do what we talked about. And so it was with his <laughs> blessings as much as anyone's that I, I decided to dive in 100% and make a run at it. So when we talk about role playing, everyone generally thinks d and it kind of, it's kind of the default setting for people's brains. But you've yep. also worked on everything from Star Wars. Star Wars is like one of the first ones that I always say people like, if you want to explain role, how to do role playing, start with like Star Wars, start with something else. I mean, the industry as a whole has moved forward from D&D. It's got a oh, lot entirely. of different games. I mean, yeah. how much fun has it been going to do other times? Eagle Beagle, you've also worked with Evil Hat doing Faith, and you've done Savage Worlds, you've done Rifts, and you've done a couple other titles. Well, I, mean, I was not involved in any of the Fate stuff, except yeah. like the very, very far background, you know, just as a, as a oh. fan and a friend and stuff like that. But I didn't do any Fate work. Okay. My so. said. But you've done a lot of, but as the industry as a whole, it's, it's, we've gotten more titles and people have gotten more creative with the idea of it just, it, it's imagination, it's old fashioned storytelling with, with dice. And in some cases, this is, doesn't even use dice. It uses cards or special dice like Fate dice or Shattered right. shard, shard Dice. Has it with you seen as you've seen the industry move? I mean, literally, uh, for these last thirty years, um, has it been impressive to watch it go beyond just Tolkien's universe, basically oh, the D and D universe? Beyond, beyond any question, uh, I've uh, I've been at the, I've, I've been in this. I wasn't in the first generation, but I was easily in the second generation of, of writers and designers. So I've had a chance to really watch this this hobby, this industry grow. Not only that, but I, I'm 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 kind of proud of the fact that I've helped this hobby in this industry grow. A lot of people would be surprised to know that it is bigger than it's ever been. 
there are more players playing. There are more people involved in dice and, and paper tabletop role playing oh, games than have ever been playing in the history of this hobby. It was like, well, you know, it looks like it's just sort of had its heyday. And no, no, it's still in its heyday. It's in its, it's in like a whole new heyday. It's just there's so many games, as you mentioned. There's so many ways to play, and we've watched the evolution of this hobby over and over. There's just been these new changes. I talk about the various phases and sea changes that have come along. Uh, you know, electronic distribution before that, desktop publishing, uh, the, the 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 ability to do electronic transactions online, Kickstarter. Uh, is a huge part of the tabletop RPG industry and hobby now. And all of these things have helped change the face of this. And it has been incredibly exciting to not only watch it, but to be a part of it. Uh, I talk a lot about my own design aesthetic these days as somebody who's been doing this since it was have a character class, have some hit points, you know, figure out what cool special abilities you're going to give that character class. Now it's, it's about player narrative and empowering the player to participate with the game master in storytelling <laughs> and other design aesthetics that help the game master's uh, role be more uh, entertaining and easier understanding that that the typical GM now has kids and uh, a, you know a, a life and a job and yeah. and he or she is going to need tool sets that really facilitate jumping in and running games more quickly and easily so we've we've seen a complete shift in how games are designed so that they're less complex and more story oriented. It's easy to figure out what you're doing with your character. It's easier to set up and run an adventure. A lot of the things that I work on now are tool sets that make putting an adventure faster and more just boom, 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 let's go, go, go. Let's get, you know, we got four hours to play tonight, guys, or we have two hours to play. Let's dive in and tool sets for playing online via play by post or, or virtual tabletop. And just all of these different technological and sociological and other elements that have, have amalgamated into this massive shift in it but at the core it's still just like you said a bunch of people get together to have some characters in a story and tell a story together and that's still compelling that's still the heart of the experience entirely oh entirely i couldn't agree more so on the topic of like story um i had a question for you so what would be of all the games that you've created uh what oh. is your favorite that you've done and if you were to play it what would you play in that world Oh, wow. <laughs> we don't ask um, easy questions sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. The thing is, um, I'm always working on the next thing. So um, what's been kind of interesting and slightly frustrating for some folks is that when you ask me a question about like that, I'm actually thinking in terms of the game you haven't seen yet. Oh. Uh, so um, <laughs> yeah, I know. We're, we're, all like, we're all ears. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, right now, I'm, I'm, my focus is on the things that we're working on that we're going to be publishing next year, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty excited about uh, about those. I mean, I, I of course I, I love all of my babies, but um, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm kind of in another headspace. So I mean, it's it's uh, of the stuff that I've done, I'm incredibly proud of the Savage Drifts work. It was the most difficult design work of my life. Um, making that 1990s very involved, very very kind of arcane rule set come together under Savage Worlds rules and effectively break Savage Worlds rules but in a way that still works, that was hard. It was really intense. And there's some really cool stuff that I've done with that and I've, 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 I'm very proud of that work and now I've got some other people that are working on some really cool stuff along those lines. Pretty excited about that for them. I'm still overseeing that. Um, I, and the thing was, somebody presented me the option and says, hey, I want to run a Savage Rifts game and I want you to actually get to play. This was at Gen Con. So I... It's an interesting thing. I kind of got to cheat. I got to take one of my favorite characters from Shintar, which is my epic fantasy setting that I created for Savage Worlds way back when, and I took my Corindian, which is like these uh, you know, Polynesian elf martial artist types, and uh, I made That's him fun. into a cyber knight uh, in Savage Rifts, nice. and I got to play him, and that was oh, wow. that was rocking. That was pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, as far as the stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm working on right now, there's a lot, there's a thing everybody that knows that I'm working on. It's basically called, you know, it's basically sort of GI Joe for adults. It's called Freedom Squadron. And that's going to be a huge, uh, a huge thing where I'm very, very excited about this. It's got a whole new rule set I've come up with called Plans and Operations, which, uh, Shane Hensley, who's the guy who created Savage Worlds, even said, Hey man, you got fade all over my Savage Worlds and it works. And, um, it's a, it's a, it's a set of cards and rules that you can use to do schemes Heist games, Shadow Run, A Team, Mission Impossible, any of these things that really engages all the players in a completely different mode than they're normally used to. There's still storytelling, there's still role play, but other characters get a chance to use all their other skills and abilities and do these 
global operation kinds of things. And I'm really excited about that. Everybody's in, in Catering exper experience that have been excited. And, and I'm, I'm really hoping to get a chance that somebody else will run it so I get to play in that one. Because uh, who doesn't want to play a G.I. <laughs> Joe character style, you know, well, you that, got, that kind of thing. You got someone so. over here that <laughs> I'm always tuning the horn of Savage Worlds. By the way, always. little also known little known fact, last Chupacabra Con, you were here in Austin, you actually had two of our, our people at your table who playing that game and you're gonna use you you're gonna have your like their code names. Oh yes, 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 yes. They are Unless, in there. Yeah, that's and, right. And, I, I collect all the code names and all the code names are gonna be uh, included in the books. In fact, as part of our Kickstarter program will be a a live Twitter feed done running up to and during the Kickstarter which will represent uh, ongoing missions that are happening in the world as though they're really happening. Mm -hmm. And all those codenamed characters are going to get mentioned repeatedly doing cool stuff during that. Oh, that's yeah. so neat. Alessa's <laughs> character was this total raging badass who like apparently destroyed a truck. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Big so, time. Big so time. We, we have not too much time left, but you said you were working on some uh, something else real fast I want to get to. What else? You said you were working on something. You are working on your LLC. Well, the Evil Evil Beagle Games LLC is, is coming up. That's Len Pimentel of Lakeside Games is coming on as our vice president, and he's also the business manager. He's got a whole bunch of stuff that he's working on. He's one of the most underestimated game designers in the industry right now, but that will change in 2018, I promise you. He and I are working together on something called Prowls and Paragons, which is, is, is going to be the next champions. I mean, I mean, this is the original hero system guys who've played this game and agree with me that we've created the next champions, which was the biggest superhero game of all time for a long, long time. And we're coming out with a, a user-friendly version, you know, a, a game that anybody could dive in, play, and they can understand in five minutes, but it has all the flexibility. I'm very excited about this. It's a brand new superhero system. I've been playing a lot of that. That's exciting. We've got a whole a whole thing called Omniverse, which is going to be multiple settings. It's going to be like a multi-dimensional thing where there's going to be multiple settings where they all cross over, so characters could easily cross over. We have an online com play component that's tied to that, which I'm, I'm also very, very excited about. Plus the Freedom Squadron thing. Uh, which is going to be a Savage Worlds, you know, like I said, G.I. Joe kind of, of game. And we're very excited about that. Those are two big Kickstarters we have planned. There is more Savage Rift stuff coming. Three books uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff that's attached to that. Uh, there's the Michael Serbux Presents line and the Bill Keys Presents. Bill Keys uh, is another one of the guys who's partners. Michael Serbux is a partner. So Evil Beagles is coming out swinging. Plus, um, I've got all kinds of offers sitting on the table for other stuff that you know, I could work on. I just kind of <laughs> I have to learn to say no quite a bit. Yeah. But uh, I will say this. Role-playing games are bigger, as I said, than they've ever been. There's so many ways to play them now. There's so many people who are coming back from the original days. They're bringing their kids. Their kids are bringing their kids. There are three generations of gamers coming to the table now. Uh, and, and it's just unbelievable what I'm seeing with that. And there's all the different ways that people can play, all the different ways that people are engaging with their hobbies and their, and their interests. I'm really, really thrilled to be a part of this. And thanks. I just want to thank you folks for letting me have a chance to talk to you about it. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks um, for having Real me. quick, before we let you go, um, someone, uh, I'm a cartographer for fantasy worlds and RPG games and such, you know, I do a lot of commission work. Um, what advice would you give uh, myself, including uh, and other viewers, uh, what would you give advice for them to, you know, I mean, instead of saying, like, follow your dreams, what would you, you know, what would you say if they just keep wanting to go and they just don't think they're getting through it? What would you encourage to say about that? Well, it, it really depends. It's, 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 it's never been easier to do your own thing. Right. Never. It's never been easier to get your own thing out there. The tools exist that as long as you're willing to do the work, nothing is stopping you from sharing it. The, the Internet provides all the different tools and opportunities to do so. Drive to RPG and RPG Now. Uh, you just have to sign up as a publisher, and boom, you can start publishing your own stuff. And really, that is the best way to go, is if you're not already you know, hooked in with somebody to, 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 to look at your stuff and start publishing it, that doesn't stop you at all. The only thing stopping is you is you. And if you've got cartography you want to do, do some damn maps and put them up there and show them off. You've got some art that you want to show, put an put, put electronic portfolio together and get it out there and let people see it. You have a writing that you want to share, write stuff and share it. That's, that's how you get the attention. You put it out there, you share it, you get people excited about it, you, you talk to people about it, you build a community around your creation. I talk about this all the time at conventions. There's a panel I do called the four C's. Creator, content, community, and consumer. And the consumer's over here and the creator's over here. And there's a line that exists between them and is created between the community and the content. And as long as you are willing to work hard at building that community around your content, you will eventually get people interested and excited in what you're doing. And again, as you do the work, yeah. you, somebody will care about what you're doing. 
That's really thank great you. advice. Seriously, so, thank you so much for that. That's going to help me a whole lot. I, yeah. So <laughs> you, you have a lot of options, trust me. Yes, I so, do. We all so do. So we have to go, unfortunately. We're running out of time. But, Sean, if someone wants to find out, like your Sean picks, which you're always picking really awesome games, thank or you. What, you, what else what else is going on in, with you, pers uh, your career, or what else, where can they well, go find you? Uh, I assume you guys have show notes, so feel free to put all these links in. Sean's pick of the day .com. Uh, is a really good thing. Facebook, honestly, just follow, friend me or follow me on Facebook. Yep. Better hurry, though. I'm about to run out of slots. Apparently, you, you actually top out. I'm almost out of friend slots. But friend or follow me on Facebook, Sean Patrick Fan, and I'm very easy to find on there. EvilBeagleGames.com mm -hmm. is another place to, to come find me. Um, and, yeah, that's that's I'm, I'm out there. I'm very, very public and oh, wow. uh, easy to find and happy to make more friends. Yep. Well, thank and you so much, Sean. You, you definitely inspired a lot of us, and you definitely inspired... Our viewers and I'm sure everyone's. We have a crew like, in the background and I like every game you were talking about. They're like, I want to play that. I'm looking at their heads nodding. So we got to <laughs> go, that, guys. guys thank, you. thank you for watching. We're gonna hey, come back. Hey, I'm guest at next Chupacabracon. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there. Yes, yes. we'll be there. <laughs> I, I'm actually teaching how to play Savage World, so that's gonna be awesome. So I'm doing, I'm doing the I'm doing the big charity game for it. It's actually gonna be based on Freedom Squadron, but it's called The Other Guys. So it's actually gonna be a comedy game based in the Freedom Squadron setting. But it's the other guys, the ones who didn't quite make the cut for Freedom Squadron. Oh so my gosh! The game. And, yeah. and yeah. that one, that one every year always includes Sean, includes Shane Hensley, who's is the creator of Savage Worlds, uh, Clint Black. It's uh, John Wick. Sometime it's a lot of fun. It's a charity. You can screw with dice rolling, and yeah. God knows they have for five bucks. Um, check it out. Yep. But we're going to... Sorry about the dog, guys. No, oh, no you're good. Fine. You're good. Sean, peace. thanks again, man. Thank you so much. But we're going to let peace you out. go. we got to let you peace out. We're going to let Bye. you guys go. Next up, guys, we're going to wrap everything up, so stay tuned.